Hello everyone, my name is Holly and during this hour we are going to be uh, talking about the future. In fact, we will be talking about the probabilities um, uh, of the future. So we will look at, be looking at specific things and we'll decide what, per, what in 25 years, what is the percentage that that will happen? And we'll discuss that uh, systematically. So come on in and let's enjoy some, uh, let's enjoy practicing English together. So we will be talking about the uh, the future. This is a fluency lesson. We'll be looking at these different situations. If there's time, which there usually isn't, we'll discuss some questions, and then we'll talk about the, the idioms about the future, if there's time for that. Um, so anyway, uh, come on in and let's practice English. Good morning, good morning, Rebecca. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How, how are you today? Good, very good. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Great. Did you have a good weekend? I know it's Tuesday morning for you, but it's still Monday for me. So. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I I have. Yeah. Uh huh. What What did you do? Well, uh, I went to my parents' house and. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I I went uh, running. I went uh, biking. I went uh, for a different mm -hmm. walk. Yeah, I like to you know uh, do ex different sports during the the weekend because uh, mm -hmm. I have more free time. You know. Yeah, that's and that's really great. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. So. Yeah, I, and I I went on several drives, several long drives. <laughs> so I didn't do any sports, but I uh, yeah well, went and saw the countryside, and so where did you uh, go? Dirt roads. <laughs> so I wanted to see where where this this one dirt road would go. So we drove down it, and well, it, it went to the, it went to yeah we did we we did uh, we. We drove to the. It, we we ended up in the next town, or in actually two, three towns away, which was uh, about forty five minutes on the highway. Oh, so, okay. so we drove back on the highway. So we found the the back road to get to this town. So which is really which was really cool, and it was fun. And yeah, so that is the, the most important thing. I, I can't remember what exactly are you are you living. I live in Idaho. Are you familiar with that? Where, with where that is? Well, I, I know it's one of the states of uh, USA. You know, uh -huh. Idaho is is famous uh, for different films. Always. Yes, so we're, yeah. yeah, we're famous for potatoes. Actually, is what we're famous. We're famous for potatoes. Ah, really? Yeah. Your region produces uh, potatoes. Yeah, Idaho's very famous for their potatoes. Um, like uh, several uh, McDonald's, um, their uh, potato chips are from Idaho. Not oh, potato okay. chips. They're, they're French, they French. They make their French fries from Idaho potatoes. Ah, yeah. Yeah, Idaho's right here. Yeah. No, I I have the the map. Well, I check. Yeah. 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 Yeah, let's see. Yeah, the map. The map. This is where Idaho is, and okay. I'm. I actually. I. I used to live about right where this hand is, and now I live a little bit further north, about like this. Okay. And what is the the weather like? In that uh, well, well, in this part of Idaho, it's they call it the Banana Belt, and um, it's banana it's like, yeah, it's it's not very. It doesn't get that cold. Um. But the rest of Idaho, yeah, yeah. Uh, the rest of Idaho gets uh, very cold during the winter, and uh -huh. very, uh, very hot. Um, uh, oh, not very too hot in the summer. Um, maybe 
30 degrees during the summer and... 30 degrees for me is too much. Yeah, it's too hot. <laughs> it's too, yeah. It is too hot. Uh, but in the, in the, then in the winter it gets um, maybe to minus 5, minus 10, minus 15. Oh, depending. wow. Too cold. Uh, so, yeah. So we, we we have, you know, everything. And I'm, I'm really excited because uh, in my area, I'm living in the mountains, so we'll have snow. So, and this is where, uh, da hello David, this is where David's living, he's up, up like right, about right here. Right. Somewhere where this hand is. So. And you are living in your own private Idaho. Uh, yeah, I'm living in my own private Idaho, that's right, <laughs> right here. And then, then we yeah, have. Uh, neighbors. Uh, kinda, kind of, kind of. Of course, uh, yeah. It's a, It's probably about uh, from where I live to drive over to where he is. I would say it's a. Uh, I don't hours? know. What? So I don't know the distance, but um, two hours. I don't know. Uh, no, probably. it's more. More like well, where, where I used to live, it would take eight hours. Right. Now that I'm living in the mountains, it probably take a little bit longer. Yeah. Uh, eight hours. Eight, uh, yeah, from from this from basically from from this border to this border is probably a twelve hour drive. Oh my god, eight hours in spring uh, is just uh, one side to the other side. Mhm. Mm well, yeah, no, twelve hours usually. I think I would say from one side to the other, and there's there's a big mountain range uh, right here. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the Blues Mountain. So yeah, I'm, I'm, like from here to from the bottom to, from this from this part to this part would take a good 12 hours to drive as well as yeah. through most of the mountain. Yeah. Um, from from here to over there, well, I know for sure from where I live in Idaho to, to uh, here in Wyoming, it's a 12-hour drive. From here to this part of Colorado, it's about, about a six-hour drive. So it depends, or I guess about eight hours. From here to Utah to Salt Lake, it's about a six-hour drive. Because the terrain is a, a more is plain. Yeah, it might be the terrain. That's one reason, but it's, but it's just it, it's even though it's it, the map kind of makes it look small, but it's, they're huge. <laughs> so yeah. so um, from from I drove from here to about right there, and it took about eight hours. And then I drove from here till here, and it took another eight hours. So, wow. did you, David? Did you live in Minnesota or Michigan? No, Minnesota for a while. Minnesota. Okay. Yes. Minnesota. Minnesota. And then you and then moved to Florida. to Florida. And in Florida, I drove all the way down to Oregon, 14 days on the road. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, that's Exciting amazing. Though. That that was probably fun though, wasn't and it? And Texas is yeah, it was fun, but Texas is so so big, like uh, driving and. <laughs> I was in Texas, yes. Driving, I was in Texas, yes. It's so such a huge state. Uh huh. And it's probably did it take you a couple of days to get through? Yeah, a couple of days. But the uh, you know, it's mainly is uh, it's desert. But mm -hmm. it's a beautiful. You have different kind of deserts. One is with the cactus mm -hmm. and everything, and then we yeah. have the one with the rocks, a lot of rocks. And the mm -hmm. last one, it was beautiful. It was like a dunes, orange okay. dunes all over yeah. the place. Very pretty. We, we have, in this in southern Idaho, uh, southwest Idaho, we have a lot of deserts, in which is it's by it's Nevada. And between Idaho and Nevada, uh, where Las Vegas, it's a terribly long drive. <laughs> so between, between those two. So all right. <coughs> Let's go on to the topic. Where is everybody? So well, I always have an issue getting into the into Berlin. So I don't know. Maybe they have some issues too. That could be that could be the the situation. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm sorry for coughing in your ears. <laughs> so all right. So this what we're going to actually be working on today is probability. So what is probability, David? It's something that you study in college. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want to remember that, but it's very important. Is yeah. it, it, it probably is just a chance that you get that you have to get something or achieve yeah. something. So the chance yeah. of probability. 
Uh huh. I, I always I always like to uh, to uh, call a probability like a percentage or a chance. Right, but it, I mean so. it's 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 very interesting because you can actually calculate, you know, the chances of something to get. Uh, very accurately, and that's mm -hmm. what the insurance companies do. That's what the uh, uh, the banks do. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, that's true. Yeah, they do. And I mean, they actually can predict. You know, oh, we're gonna make money, or we're not gonna make money. You know, mm -hmm. the credit card companies. <laughs> yes. Stuff like that. Yep. All right, that's true. And as, okay, so what we're gonna do during this hour is we're gonna talk about events in 25 years, and we're gonna give our opinion. Using probability because we can't really figure it out, but we're gonna we're gonna say okay, this could be a fifty percent chance. This could be a ninety percent, ten percent, two percent, four percent, whatever percent we think, and then explain why. So when twenty five years from now is what year? So twenty fifteen plus twenty five is twenty forty. So in twenty forty. Could this happen? So, is a, there is a po probability that this could happen? So, let's let's start with this first one. China will become the world's most powerful economy. Rebecca, what do you think? What is your per what percentage do you think that China could become the world's most powerful economy? Uh, do I have to say a number? Yeah. What percentage? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, fifty percent. Fifty percent. Okay. Why do you say fifty percent? Well, because uh, I've heard the Chinese economy is not going as well as everyone thinks. You know, so maybe there's a possibility that uh, something wrong uh, happens and the economy. Um, uh, doesn't rise um, mm -hmm. uh, at the rhythm. Can I say that? Yeah. Uh, uh, that used used to. Okay. So so you're saying that it's it's not as the economy is things in China are not going as well as it as a lot of people are think they're saying that it could. Yeah, because okay. you know. Um, mm, mm, the mm, well, the, the reason why uh, the uh, Chinese economy is going as well is because uh, they are not paying um, the salary uh, as they should, you know. So mm -hmm. now the employees are start thinking that it's not fair, and uh, maybe in the future uh, they they will have uh, China will have uh, problems about that, and the situation will have to mm -hmm. change. So that uh, will make the, the economy change as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Well, thank you. Know, you know, my yeah. There. Very. Thank you very much for your opinion. Excellent. All right. And I was going to write it on the pen, but I decided to use the computer, I mean, to use the typing, because <laughs> it looks nicer. So, all right, 50% is one one opinion. All right, and, um, yeah, okay, nice to see you again. Thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, and then Ayasser. Hello. Hi, hello. Hi. How are Fine. you? How are you doing? Fine. Remind me where you're from, Yasser. I'm from Oman. Oman, all right. Cause, and you yeah. were in my class a couple weeks ago, right? Sorry? Were you in this class a couple weeks ago? Uh, I'm, uh, maybe before, but uh, one month ago. Okay, that's what I thought. I, I recognize yeah. <laughs> you, recognize you, but uh, I wasn't yeah. sure. Thank you. So. Thank, okay. you. Thank you. All right. Uh, all right. Hello, Lena. Nice to see you. Hello, Holly. Nice to see you, too. Yeah, I was thinking about you today. So, oh, thank you. <laughs> so it, Canada and everything, I was like, oh, I hope I get to see Lena. Something came up in class about the word expatriate, and I was like, oh, Lena, Lena wants to be one of those. <laughs> so, I, I like your classes very much. <laughs> oh, good. All right, well, thank you. All right, so David, uh, what we're what, everybody, what we're talking about is a percentage. What is the percentage that these events will happen by 2040? So, so David, what do you think? Uh, Rebecca said 
What is your opinion? I would say that it's less than that. Probably maybe forty percent or thirty percent. Okay. Why do you th why do you say so? Because the Chinese economy is is very unstable. Number one, and mm -hmm. the rules are arbitrary. So. You know, there's no like. I don't think there is a follow up. I don't think they are very good planners. They do what they think. I think they do what is good at the moment, but they never think mm -hmm. about the future. The follow up. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I. As I see the economy in China, is like okay, let's make money now. They don't think about how that rules or regulations are going to be sustainable in the future. They don't care about mm -hmm. that, you know, and mm -hmm. I notice in everything that you you see China, you know, they, yeah, they're producing everything, but they, they're not thinking about, oh, how this producing everything is going to affect our economy or affect our people or the environment. They don't, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. They're not very good thinkers about that. So that's mm -hmm. what, for that reason, I don't think they're going to be very successful in the future. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. All right. And okay. And what do you think? In 2040, could China become the world's most powerful economy? Mm, maybe other figure uh, so so happening likely to happen, but uh, as a reality, 30 or 40 percent because of the economic distribution system is pretty unfair now, and, uh, yeah. and uh, they they have to do a lot of things to uh, to be powerful, and mm -hmm. now it's. Uh, every country faces, you know, this kind of thing. That now they facing the bubble economy uh, mm -hmm. will be over. Oh, maybe it was over because so maybe how to deal with that? The key issue now mm -hmm. yeah, for the economy yeah. there. Yeah, and I I I always for, I remember something that you said um, a couple months ago, and I don't know if it was for this this lesson or a different one, but you were talking mm -hmm. about. Um, how uh, Japan was slated to become a world economy, a powerful economy at one time back in the 80s, and mm -hmm. it took a turn for the worse in the 90s. So it could happen yeah. to, to any country. Know, yeah. yeah. So, all right. Thank you, Yasser. What is your opinion? Uh, could China become the world's most powerful economy by 2040? Japan, um, I don't have uh, an idea. Sorry, that. Oh, so you don't you don't have any idea? No idea there. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No opinion. All right, thank you. All right, yeah. and um, yeah. <clears throat> um, how about Lena? What's your opinion? Could China become the world's most powerful economy by twenty in twenty five years? I I agree. Uh, and yeah. I think it may be 60 percent, 60 percent, yes. Okay. Uh, yes, because they grow up very fast. The mm -hmm. China people can adapt everywhere, I think, uh, and uh, it's it's possible. Mm -hmm. The China okay. will become the world's most powerful economy. So you so one person says fifty percent, two people say thirty to forty percent, and another person says sixty percent, and um, and and then Yasser says I have no idea, and that's my answer too. I have no idea. So, but um, maybe um, there's I think there's a fifty percent chance that any country could become the world's powerful economy. Ah, uh, holy! But um, I'm traveled um, in different countries, and uh, if I want to, to buy uh, toys for my children, all, uh -huh. I I can buy only uh, toys made uh, by made China. In China. <laughs> uh, yes, made everywhere in Europe, in Sri Lanka, in Egypt, um, and I've never been in. USA and Canada, but I think uh, you have the same situation. Yeah, we, we actually we do. Um, it's funny because I, that reminds me of a, a lady who was she uh, when I she was a visiting professor at the university that I was attending, and she was there for one semester, and she was from um, Kazakhstan, and um, one of my friends took her shopping 
um, for for clothing, and she was, got really disgusted because everything was made in China, and she didn't want any clothing that was made in China. <laughs> so. <laughs> Because um, Kazakhstan is near China, she she can buy it uh, in her yeah. country. So uh, she went so far from the, uh, your uh, her country, but uh, everything made by China in China. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so full so, and. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, she ended up finding a, finding a coat and some things that were made in the U.S. and stuff like that, but. Um, but she, she, I, I remember she. My friend was just laughing about it because of the way she was responding. What? This is made. This is so nice. It was made in China. No way. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, but anyway, okay. So the next one, it, by 2040, um, what, what is your opinion? People will have to work much longer hours and will be paid less. Let's start with Ake okay, this time. Ake, okay, what is your opinion here? Uh, I think it's up to the country. Uh, talking about Japan, I think it's likely to happen because aging society st has started here. So that means, and and pension, uh, used, it used to be pension can, will be paid 60, the age of 60. Now, government uh, rise up to, until 65. Uh -huh. And maybe they are thinking about 70. Wow. Patients. So, or they encourage them to work, work, work all through the life. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Maybe for such a uh, totally unbalanced uh, population balance. Unless we we didn't, uh, we won't accept uh, many immigrants, you know, uh, this kind of, this, uh, this unbalanced population uh, will, will continue. Mm -hmm. So this is very likely to happen here. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And so what is the percentage, what do you think? What's the probability? 80. And 80%. 60 workers. Yeah. And in, in addition to that, 60% workers became a temporary worker now. Mm, so, really? Yeah. That, and. Uh, so company uh, force regular worker to work long time hour instead uh, in return to they uh, you know they pay their their uh, pension or their, mm -hmm. they keep their status in the company but mm -hmm. uh, yeah it causes uh, both sides of the labor forces. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you, David. Um, what do you think? What is your opinion? Will people have to work much longer hours and be paid less in 25 years? I hope not, but I guess that's the tendency that we're going in in many countries. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I would say, yeah, I, I would say maybe 70%. Mm -hmm. Also, in the U.S., we realize now that the unions have less power every day. Mm -hmm. So that's also a very important factor in order to defend the their, uh, the workers' rights. Um, so without without unions, we won't have much support. So we'll see. So I, I think it's unfortunately that people don't think don't think that don't think that way, you know. Mm -hmm. so, but yeah, I think it's gonna. Yeah, I think it's a sad reality. I, I think. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. And <clears throat> Elena, what is your opinion? Um, I don't agree with this uh, sent, um, this point uh, mm -hmm. because I think people try to uh, uh, substitute people's uh, uh, job. Uh, so uh, people uh, try to create a lot of machines and uh, different uh, kind of machines that can do uh, work instead of them. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, uh, that uh, people try to work much um, less than uh, than uh, before. 
Oh, okay. So yeah. you're, you're yeah, absolutely. You're completely opposite. Yeah. Um, you're, I think uh, there are um, aftermatic uh, working place. So mm -hmm. maybe a lot of people will be without job. I mm -hmm. think so. So you but, just, uh, <laughs> uh -huh. if, uh, maybe in, in future it will be a problem for people to work. Okay, so you're saying that because of technology, yes, yeah, technology, mm -hmm. that uh, people will be working less hours yes, and yes. and be so. Uh, I think uh, ten percent. <laughs> okay, so, point. so your opinion is ten percent. Yeah, it is a completely different uh, way of thinking than. The, the guys have had okay and um, yeah because there's a possibility of both of them actually so um, so Rebecca what is your opinion mm, well um, uh, I don't know about this uh, topic uh, but well my guess um, would be maybe 50 60 percent you know, because uh, this idea is uh, is uh, is starting coming up. Can I say that? Mm -hmm. In different um, media, you know, newspapers. Um, uh, but here in Spain, people don't want to hear about that. So I don't know in the rest of the world. Uh, in Spain, would be very difficult to 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 have the you know to 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 make that ch ch uh, change. Mm. But uh, I think, of course, over the years, uh, the way as we understand now, the way that people have to work uh, will change. So everything will change in the future. And maybe, you know, uh, yeah. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah but uh, I, of course, uh, I'm sure that in the future, uh, um, we'll change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, thank you. And my opinion is kind of a mix of both of all of your guys's, but I think because of the advent of technology, that um, people will, more and more people will start working from home or in virtual situations and um, and because of that they will not be commuting and so the employers will be requiring more from them and <clears throat> as a result of that they will have to work much longer hours but then they will not be paid uh, the same so that's kind of what I'm thinking will probably happen at least in the US um, and so I'm going to put I'm I'm going to agree with uh, as far as numbers I'm going to say 50 to 60 percent um, probability probability <clears throat> but I think life will be changed um, significantly in t 25 years but maybe not who knows <laughs> so all right the next one <clears throat> there will be equal numbers of men and women in management in 25 years what do you guys think? equal numbers of men and women in management. So let's start with David. David, what's your opinion? Um, I think so. Definitely, mm -hmm. yes, because there are more women now in education. I think, mm -hmm. in fact, there are more women now going to college than men. Mm -hmm. and, but the issue, I think, is that it's not the number of women in management, but it's the amount of money that they would be making. Mm. I, I think the inequality in the payments will be bigger, uh, or maybe the same that it is now. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't think I, I don't think that that's going to change. Mm -hmm. I, I don't. That's my opinion. So I would okay. say the equal numbers of men, women. Yeah, it would be. Yeah, it would be a hundred percent. There will be more women in management, but the money they will they will making less money than men, definitely. Okay, and making less money than men, which um, uh, doesn't surprise me at all. Um, so, uh, okay, what is your opinion? 
notice I'm asking the guys mm -hmm. first. <laughs> so. Also, it's up to the uh, country. Uh huh. Yeah, the system of society or consciousness of society is different up to the countries. And talking about here, this kind of thing is uh, happening a little by little, gradually, not in 25 years, but in a few. But uh, uh, more women get involved with their uh, work, or uh, but still some discrimination of salary, or maybe to get a position. Men and women are not equal, but uh, uh, gradually uh, it is changing. So not for 25 five years. I'm not sure, but uh, if the society uh, changes, sometimes dramatic change happens. So uh, it's very difficult to predict. But uh, I hope it will be achieved in the future. <clears throat> Hello, can you hear me? Oops. Holly, are you there? <laughs> <laughs> Holly! I guess she's having, she having an issue with her internet. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, Let's just wait. Yeah, but, uh, she's coming back. I'm here. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. I did, uh, yeah, you know what I did? What? <clears throat> Maybe, <laughs> you think about guys' points. <laughs> no, I, I muted. I muted because I had to cough and forgot that I was muted. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I'm like going, I'm here. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, and so I just, I went up to settings to see, okay, what's wrong? And then um, it was working great. So I was like, oh, okay, it has to be the mute. <laughs> <laughs> so, oops. Um, so, uh, okay, what is the percentage that you would choose for this? So, in 25 years, maybe 50. 50 percent. And mm -hmm. for Japan, wow. So, okay. All right, and um, okay, now let's go to the women. So, Rebecca, what is your opinion? Uh, well, I would like that, you know, but uh, I think, uh, well, considering the mentality uh, is changing in most of the countries, uh, that could be possible in the future, but um, I'm not sure if in 25 years, maybe more, you know. Mm -hmm. so, um, I don't, I don't know. I think uh, the number will be closer, but not equal. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, uh, the, this word is very difficult for me. Um, when uh, you know the power of the men, how do you, how do you uh, over a women? How do you express is that? Is it is it male chauvinism? Yeah, say again because it's so difficult. Male chauvinism. Male chauvinism. Yeah, male chauvinism is something uh, that, uh, for uh, in my idea, is uh, all over the world. Just uh, knowing uh, some countries that uh, people think. Mm -hmm. So it's in everywhere, in different mm -hmm. uh, ways, you know, but uh, uh, we can see it uh, closer than uh, closer to us than we think. So mm -hmm. that is a very important uh, issue that the uh, population has to defeat. Defeat? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, so what percentage would you say? Well, I say 80%. 80%, okay. So it could happen, but not, you're thinking it could get to 100% later on, but not in the next 25 years. <clears throat> well, uh, the mentality must, uh, should, uh, should uh, change, uh, you know, very fast, and I don't think that, that happens. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Elena, um, how about you? 
20, by 2040, will there be equal numbers of men and women in management? And what percentage do you think? Lena, are you there? Okay, maybe she's the one that's having problems with her internet. Maybe. And she'll be back <laughs> if she's not if she's not gone. Or she's muted. Lena, are you muted like I was? Okay. Um well in my opinion, as the for those of you guys who know, I was living in uh, Finland for 11 years and if for any of you guys that know the history of Finland Finland uh, never had women, uh, equal rights for women because from the very beginning they always had it um, <clears throat> men and women have always shared um, uh, the responsibility for bringing home the money and the bacon and women have always worked outside of the home and all of that and um, so you would think that they would be a bit more progressive as, in that respect, but they're not. <laughs> so um, based on that experience, I would say um, much less percentage than you guys did. <laughs> I'm at a I'm in a more um, conservative number, more forty like percent chance of that happening. So, all right, um, Lena, are you are you there? Is anyone there? Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Oh. Yes. I thought, oh no, was I just talking to myself? <laughs> so. no, we are here, hearing you. <laughs> yeah, but at least with with Google Hangouts, when when you get kicked out, eventually the the uh, um, eventually the Google Hangout will. Show tell you something, but I've been in classrooms where you get kicked out and you don't know, so you're just sitting there talking away and you don't know that <laughs> that, they're, that you're not in the classroom. So, all right, um, Elena, are you still are you there? Okay, she she must be having uh, problems. So let's go on. <clears throat> the gap between rich and poor will increase. So let's start with Ake. Okay. What do you think? What What's, what do you think in that respect? You're talking about now uh, gap between rich and poor uh, happened uh, in America in the past 50 or 25 years. Yeah, it happened a lot in America or other, mm -hmm. other countries too. Mm -hmm. So it's likely to happen uh, to the future as well. Mm -hmm. But, uh, okay. uh, you know, the, uh, how can I say uh, Check and balance. Uh, you know, if the society goes uh, very radical one way, uh, mm -hmm. uh, thinking back the history, uh, in, in that at some point, at a level, of, um, at some level, check and balance uh, happened. Uh, so it might happen in the future. Mm -hmm. If that happens, uh, percentage become low. But if it won't ha if it won't happen, a percentage is very high. Mhm. Mm okay. Yeah. So, um, so with the checks and balances, uh, w w when you what, what explain what you mean by that? Uh, for example, um, you know, uh, talking about Japan, Japanese uh, current uh, conservative Hawke is prime minister, try to uh -huh. control the media. They he vitally you know uh, talk with. Uh, right-wing people on the internet. He, so, uh, because of that, he could, he could pass the war bills very easily in Japanese Congress. But, uh -huh. however, harsh discussion, argument, or demonstration happened. Demonstration rarely happened after 1960s in Japan. And the youngster just remained silent, uh, politically. Mm. But, uh, this really? time, youngster, uh, you know, went on the street in front of the Congress, and, and a huge demonstration happened. Maybe such kind of thing. Uh, so authority or rich people always think, or Donald Trump always think, to, uh, we can uh, we can co control the media or look mm -hmm. automatic as well. But uh, somewhat in America, Occupy Wall Street movement happened. All of a sudden, maybe such kind of uh, issue 
if the go, uh, things go radical or mm -hmm. too dominative, maybe such kind of unexpected thing happens. Mm -hmm. That okay. uh, thinking uh, thinking back the history. Okay. Now it's but, happened a bit. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense. All right. And what what is what percentage would you say? Mm, so it's up to what happened in the future. It's yeah, I see. <laughs> I hope to fifty, but uh, yeah, your hope is fifty percent. <laughs> but in twenty five years, I'm not sure. Maybe more higher percentage. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much, Rebecca. What about you? What is your opinion in this respect? Will the gap between rich and poor increase by 2040? Absolutely. It's happening right now, you know. So we can mm -hmm. see that uh, now. And we just uh, have, have a look uh, back, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that happens always and now uh, the same. And I think the future will be worse, mm -hmm. as you said previously. And the you said I don't I'm not sure well there's a big uh, gap between the the what is the expression the owners of the business you know and the the employees and then in other countries mm -hmm. people where they don't have even uh, any job, so mm -hmm. well the situation in in the in the world will become a uh, world for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, are you saying a hundred percent here then? Well, um, yeah, the gap between rich and poor, uh, yeah, definitely. Okay. That's what that's what I thought I understood. Less okay. people, you know, less less people rich, but more 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 uh, really rich, of course, Ma mm -hmm. but more uh, poor or just with enough money to live, and that uh, in the future will be will uh, mean be poor. Mm -hmm. Okay, All right. Thank you. All right, David. What do you, what do you think? What's your Will the gap between rich and poor increase by 2040? I believe it's in the pipeline. It's going to happen. I mean, mm -hmm. it's happening right now. You know, mm -hmm. the the movement that we have. I think five or ten years ago, five or eight years ago, you know, the one percent, ninety nine percent, ninety nine, ninety nine percent, and one percent. You know, it's a it's a a reflection or it's a result of what's going on, the injustice that we are seeing in the workplace and you know and there are more people who are who are owning more companies and they are unwilling to share the wealth with the, with the rest mm -hmm. of us so and that's happening everywhere I mean I'm so used mm -hmm. to it in Peru is was was very you know was so shameless Mm -hmm. The rich people are so shameless and that they show off what they have. And mm. I think the same thing happens also in Brazil. And yeah. in the US is the United States is coming one of those countries too, you know, that they there are more people who have a lot of money and they don't care about the rest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so it's in the pipeline it's in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're thinking also a hundred percent chance as well. Yes. Well, we're eliminated right. now, so <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Lena, what did, are you back? Yes, yes, I, I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> no, we didn't know whether it was an inter internet problem or whatever, but we just went on. As you know, oh, we so, will. Uh, I, I have another problem. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I, I, I realized this, it was... This my boss. <laughs> I was going to say, I, it was probably probably some problem outside of the computer because you were still there five minutes, a couple minutes later. So I was like, oh. So, so... Talk to us, um, Lena. What's your opinion? Will the gap uh, between rich and poor increase? One hundred persons. Uh, uh -huh. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> one hundred persons. Uh, because I see that uh, the gap between rich and poor increase every day, mm -hmm. and uh, I think um, it increases uh, in such countries as my country and countries uh, as Russia. Mm -hmm. uh, Kazakhstan, 
so uh, I see that uh, this uh, happens. Uh, this situation happens in uh, Africa, in Asia, and in uh, South uh, America. So I think it will increase in future too. Mm -hmm. The gap between rich and poor. Yeah, because it's happening right now all over the world. Yeah. And uh, uh, something can change in, in mind, in human's mind, uh, that the uh, 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 situation will stop. Yeah, I, it probably won't. <laughs> so, Because I, I was thinking even in, in countries like like Finland where a lot of people are, um, I mean, there's a, 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 there's this, with the social programs and stuff, you can't really always tell uh, who's rich and who isn't. Um, there's still a gap between the super rich and the super poor, um, but there's a there's such a huge middle class in in that part of the world. It's it's a little bit more difficult to see um, see the gap as as much as it is, as it is in other countries um, like Mexico and the U.S. and and so forth. So. All right. Um, yes, in Finland, president of Finland, uh, she is woman. No, and, not anymore. Uh, she, no, no woman. Not anymore. No, it's it's, ah. it's Ninisto, but when I was there, it was um, uh, Tarja Hollinen, and she was a woman. Yeah. Yes. So uh, she preferred to fly uh, by um, business class. She used business class uh, when she fly to another country. Mm -hmm. She don't. She doesn't use private uh, uh, planes. Plane. Yes. Private yeah. Plane. Yeah. And uh, it's amazing for president, uh, for minister. It's amazing for yeah. our country. It's impossible. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, it was in one of the examples when I was teaching English in Korea. Um, you could not te have. You could actually not teach the boss and the students in the same. The boss and their employees in the same class, because um, if the employees were better at speaking English, they wouldn't speak because they couldn't be better than their boss. And and um, where when I was living in Finland. Not only did were the bosses and the employees in the same English class, you really couldn't tell who the boss was most of the time. <laughs> Sometimes you could, depending on the corporate culture, but most of the time you could not, because um, because they treated everybody the same. And even in the schools, um, they call um, like David. You're you're a, a school teacher. If you were teaching in Finland, this small your small students your young students would actually call you David they wouldn't call you Mr. David they would call you David so. well, you, know, you know in my school uh -huh. it's because you know I'm new and they call me <laughs> by my first name do they I'm really? A little shy because, you know, but they say they, because they don't know they cannot pronounce my last name mm -hmm. and, uh, because they have to say it in Spanish and they say mm -hmm. like uh, something like, uh, I say uh what did he say? Uh, Señor Alfred, Señor David. They call me Señor David. <laughs> but they still, but they still say the Señor. Señor you know? David, or just call me David. They say David uh -huh. because you know they forgot the Señor. <laughs> the, the, the little ones, they don't, they don't know, you know. They, they don't know, yeah. Just call me David. <laughs> How funny! Because I know that in the, the Amer especially in the American culture, you call even my sister was uh, teaching in a high school, and um, she. Uh, had to convince her colleagues to call her Heidi instead of her Mrs. Smith, you know. But they were all calling her. Uh, they were all call, uh, calling each other uh, as colleagues by their given name and not by their not by their their family name and not by their given name. Oh no, that's not. I mean, that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. So she was like, no. "Wait a minute, this is this is no. silly." Call we call each other by my... first name when we are in yeah. front of the kids. We say Mister and Mrs. You know. Like we, yeah. we are with I mean among a, among a, when we are uh in the coffee uh in the, uh, the dining room, room, the coffee place, mm -hmm. teachers' rooms, you know, we call each other by first names. Yeah. But, yeah. But 
But that's but in in Finland, even you know, ten a five year old child will call an an adult a, an a senior citizen by their first name because that's just how it is. Um, it's wow. just different. So, right. That's, that's interesting. Yeah, it's just the way different different societies are. Uh, the next one, let, let's go. This one we ha we have recently had news about Mars. We, they have found uh, us evidence of water. I'm ge I'm guessing it's evidence of the last of of the. I don't know. I guess we haven't landed on Mars yet. So I guess I don't know where that water came from. But <laughs> anyway. Um, what is what do you guys think? Uh, in tw by 2040, will we have a man land on Mars? So let's start with Lena. Let's start with you. Um, totally agree <laughs> with this point. Uh -huh. uh, you know that uh, maybe if you uh, hear uh, now, there is a uh, project, some roads project uh, mm -hmm. that. Uh, uh, one hundred of people, maybe young people, are going to the are going to um, uh, took part in this project to go to the Mars, to go on mm -hmm. Mars. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it will be possible. I think. Uh, um, uh, it will be some program how to realize it. Uh, it mm -hmm. will be <laughs> okay, excellent. All right, and um, so what what percentage do you think? Is it a hundred percent or ninety um, percent? Okay, excellent. Thank you. And um, Rebecca, what what is your opinion? Well, uh, I don't think so, you know, no. Uh, it's too, too soon, by uh, 25 years. I mm -hmm. don't think uh, a um, human being will be ready to land on Mars in that, uh, uh, <clears throat> you know, by that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so when uh, so what percentage do you think uh, based on what you said ten twenty thirty five zero? Well, uh, everything can happen, but you know the ten would be more. But okay, ten. Let's <laughs> Okay, ten percent. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. And um. Okay, what was that first thing that you... It was that Japanese? <laughs> yeah, yes. Uh, <laughs> okay. Japanese computer is complicated. Sometimes, you know, uh, we, we need to transfer the kind of thing, so... Yeah, <laughs> I okay. Typed, uh, yeah. Okay. Half Japanese, half English. <laughs> yes. that, that's funny. That's funny. Thank you. All right, uh, so, um, David, what do you... what By 2040, what do you think? A man will land on Mars or not? Definitely yes. Um, in fact, I, there's already a group of people who's, who are having selected to go uh -huh. to Mars. And wow. I, was, I was listening to NPR the other day, and this woman has been selected. She's from the United States, and she's very happy. They had been selected to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is that they, it's a one-way trip. You'll never be able to come back. Really? So, yes. Why, so you, you would, how long you, will it take? I can't remember that part, but the part that I began to say, I was more focused on the personal issue, and the the, the interview was more like a, the personal issue. So this woman was very was very excited about going to Mars, but then the mm -hmm. the, the interviewer asked her, "But do you realize that you won't be able to come back?" Mm -hmm. So it's like uh, you know going one. It's like a, you have to say goodbye to your parents and to your family, mm -hmm. to the to your to the world because it's like it's like dying. In fact, it's mm -hmm. like dying. And she said yes, and then they, she is, they, she's also, um, she was also asked about what about love and, you know, and children and all this stuff. And, mm -hmm. said, and she said something like, well, I'm, I hope that I can find somebody in the group that mm -hmm. I, can, I can fall in love with. And, oh, wow. and I'm not sure, I'm, I don't, I, they never ask about the possibility of having children because I think they cannot have children there. So they can't. They can't because you know they, they that if they having having a child will, will jeopardize the 
the expedition. Oh. Uh, and also, they also talked about the idea of, you know, getting a, that they cannot, for example, things like it's kind of simple, like they cannot make jokes or, you know, planks, some people in during the <laughs> expedition yeah. because they, they can create animosity between them and that also would jeopardize the, the, the expedition. So it's oh. very complex. I mean, besides the technological aspect, you know, that the food, the, the time, the energy that you need to get there, and if they, mm -hmm. they will be able to land on, on the planet because they have the very, very thin um, air, so the gravity I think, is very is stronger. Mm -hmm. So besides that aspect, I mean, if they can solve that aspect, then they have to work on the human aspect. You know, they, here we have 12 people that they don't know. They don't know each other. They're from different parts of the world. They're, they're all scientists. But mm -hmm. they, they will have to be together for so long. When will they leave? They, they will. Sorry. When are they planning on leaving? I can't remember, but I need to go to NPR and I want to check it out at the time because they, they, they I think it's in. Um, I believe they say in 15 years they they are leaving. 15 or something like that. Oh wow! It's, it's a couple of decades, I think. A so lot can happen in 15 years. <laughs> yeah, a lot. You're right. You know, but it's interesting the, the human aspect. That I mean, we we worry about you know the technology, the energy, yeah, you know all this stuff. But mm -hmm. we are not thinking about the human aspect, you know, yeah. living, you know, living your, and the people who are who are going. I mean, for me, it's like I don't know. If, I don't know if I would like to, 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 you know, to live my, the world, you know, and mm -hmm. and it's like it's like dying. You're dying because you just never be able to come back. Yeah. Now, why you, why can't you come back? That's. Um, I can't remember what was the what was the. Uh, I think because it takes so long to to get there. Okay. So they, they will have enough. Uh, go, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, so sorry because I saw about this uh, project too. Uh, they uh, are going to create the colony on Mars. These people. Uh, oh, the okay. New so colony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, okay. So yeah, I think that's yeah. That's I mean, it's int very interesting, very fascinating. But <laughs> I don't want to be there. <laughs> I do. I'd, I'd I'd jump at the chance to do that. Really? Uh huh. Oh yeah. But do you remember? But keep in mind that you won't be able to see the well, world. Well, in fifteen you know. in fifteen years, my my mom will probably be a dad anyway. So. Right, but you know, I they in in the same show in this NPR show, they also were interviewing people from that they are living in the in, you know in outer space. Uh huh. You know, and they were asking them, you know, what do they miss about uh, about living in the earth on Earth? And they say they miss the wind, the sun of the wind, the mm -hmm. uh, the sky, the smell of the you know the earth, the mm -hmm. sea plants. It's very it's a psychological thing, you know. You won't be able to do to, to do that. Maybe in, in Mars they, they they will try to create you know like a colony, plants and everything else. But mm -hmm. you know, but the idea you know they say that they miss the the you know, to hear wind <laughs> blowing. <Yeah. laughs> Imagine that you know. <laughs> Something yeah. that we take it for granted, right? So. <laughs> uh -huh. It's true. It's true. All right, and uh, it looks like um, I don't have. We don't have time to go and and ask. Okay, but okay. Do you have opinion? An opinion anyway? Yeah, I saw a uh, read a lot news a lot before. And maybe the one purpose is yeah. Maybe it could be serious, but the one purpose is you know companies are uh, promotion. And and they can collect a lot of application fees for that. Mm. And, oh yeah, yeah, that's true. It's, it's you know that uh, project itself is pretty irresponsible. You know, <laughs> it's not humane actually. Huh. Interesting. I hadn't even thought of that. That because yeah, I'd probably pay the application fee. I know I know I wouldn't get accepted because I'm too old, but. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, all right. Well, you y'all, uh, I do want to thank you for your participation, and I'm going to have to look up that um, the um, this uh, Mars expedition as well because that's kind of interesting. So, all right. Uh, thank you. We'll see you later. Thank you. Have a good night. Have a good night. Sleep well. Have a great day. Bye bye. bye. bye.